People all over the world love theater. The actors, through their singing, dancing, and dialogue, transport the audience into another world of ancient myths, battles, and dreams, or into the lives, both happy and sad, of ordinary people. The audience, just as much as the actors, is indispensable to the performing arts. In the grand theater, surrounded by green, one of China's national treasures, Peking Opera, is being performed. The actors vividly portray the characters, and the audience is entranced. Peking Opera is often known as Chinese opera among foreigners. To lovers of the opera, the unique and beautiful voices are captivating. The Grand Theater is located in Beijing, the capital of China. The Forbidden City is not far away. The people sitting in the auditorium of this Qing Dynasty theater are amazed not only by the performers' voices, but also by the wonderful sound effects. There are no loudspeakers, microphones, or any other modern audio equipment here. Yet, the performers' voices can be heard quite clearly even at the back of the hall. The secret to this audio wonder originates a long way back in history. The remarkable Grand Theater is located in the garden of Prince Gong's mansion on Liu Yin Street in Beijing. Prince Gong's mansion is the city's largest Qing Dynasty residence. After the capital was established in Beijing, the Forbidden City was reserved for the emperor and his wives and children. Other nobles had to build their own homes and so mansions started springing up everywhere. In Beijing today, there are some 60 mansions dating from the Qing dynasty, of which Prince Gong's mansion is the best preserved. Here, it's not the beautiful garden that attracts us. Far more interesting are the secrets of the Grand Theater. The theater at Prince Gong's mansion was built during the reign of Emperor Tongji in the mid-19th century. The stage is a meter high and 10 meters wide. The curtains are made of embroidered red cloth. Above is a board inscribed with four gold characters with the meaning joy and pleasure. 20 lanterns hang from the canopy. The floor is covered with blue bricks. Below the stage are 20 square tables with matching chairs. The Grand Theater occupies an area of 685 square meters and can hold an audience of more than 200 people. For the actors performing on the stage, as well as the audience below, the experience is highly enjoyable. Chinese theater is characterized by closeness. This is seen in the script, performance, dancing, and music, as well as in the interaction between the performers and the audience. The stage is open. The actors and the people watching them are close together. During a performance, the audience can chat, drink tea, applaud, and even make remarks as they wish. 
With the development of theater art, the stages on which it was performed also underwent improvements. In ancient times, people sang and danced when they were offering sacrifices. In a sense, this could be regarded as the earliest form of opera in China. As time passed, the religious performers became artists. In ancient times in China, actors mostly performed in natural settings. It was some time before stages appeared. By the time of the Western Han Dynasty 2,000 years ago, large-scale acrobatic shows were popular, including music, dancing, sideshows, and circus acts. At the same time, something called an audience canopy appeared as a kind of auditorium. It was raised above the stage so that the audience had a full view of what was happening on the stage. But still, the venue was essentially open and temporary. The Tang Dynasty witnessed the birth of Chinese opera. In the murals at Dunhuang, there are many depictions of stages with handrails. The many musicians and dancers presumably helped to create a magnificent spectacle. The commodity economy developed rapidly during the Song and Yuan dynasties. At the same time, venues appeared in the cities to satisfy people's needs for entertainment. The performances tended to be acrobatics and Chinese folk arts, with themes that were based on real-life events. A special fixed location venue, known as the Guolan, appeared at this time. The appearance of the Guolan reflected the maturity of Chinese opera and the formal establishment of the Chinese theatre. In 1790, artists from Anhui province brought their local opera to Beijing to celebrate Emperor Qianlong's 80th birthday. Anhui opera was noted for its pleasant melodies and popular content. Being something novel and vivid, it quickly became popular among Beijing audiences. It also incorporated features of other operas. The integration of elements from the Chu opera of Hubei added variety to the tunes and repertoire. Before long, Anhui opera was the most popular form of opera in Beijing. Later known as Peking opera, it became a national treasure of China. The popularization of Peking opera encouraged the development of opera venues during the Qing dynasty. Many opera gardens were established with stages especially set up for performances. An audience could watch a performance while drinking tea. An opera building was constructed inside the imperial palace with the design based on the traditional stage. Opera lovers with a sufficiently high social status built opera houses for their own personal enjoyment, and it was in such places that the development of opera and its venues was effectively promoted. People of lower social standing began to emulate the high officials. Nobles and the wealthy established opera houses, halls and stages in their own homes, where they invited famous troops to perform for them there. In olden times, women were forbidden from attending an opera garden. However, they were permitted to attend performances held during festivals inside theaters. The presence of women in the audience also stimulated the development of Peking opera. Female roles began to share the stage with male roles and became increasingly popular. It was common at the time to greet someone by saying, have you seen the opera today? In 
It's said that Prince Gong, besides inviting troops to perform at his theater, also appeared in performances himself, along with his servants. As a true opera lover, he incorporated a number of special features in the design of his theater. The stage was at the southern end of the theater. The high dais at the northern end was Prince Gong's special seat. His ministers would sit in the rest of the hall. But how could Prince Gong, sitting so far away from the stage, hear the opera properly? To answer this question, the first place to look is the architectural design of the building. The theater's walls are arcs that gradually enclose the convex stage. Sound spreads in the form of radiation. When it encounters an obstacle, it's either absorbed or deflected, in which case it mixes with the original sound to enhance the sound effect. The grand theater is completely enclosed so as to enhance the effect of sound reflection. More importantly, the whole theater is made of golden silk nanmu wood, which has a great sound absorption effect. The wood, in the completely enclosed environment, effectively absorbs the noise coming from various other directions and focuses attention onto the stage. The enclosed structure, wood materials and circular walls are all delicate designs that accord with acoustic principles to enhance the sound effect. But there is far more to the remarkable sound effects of the Grand Theatre. It's impossible to explain solely from the structural design how members of the audience seated in the back of the theater could hear the opera so clearly 